All right, guys, welcome back for another update to the Bitcoin Trading Journal series. I want to talk about the Bitcoin uh, macro chart because we had the weekly close. Uh, but first, I want to draw your attention to this uh, Bitcoin uh, ETP or ETF inflows. So what you see right here is the steady inflow and accumulation among you know, different exchange traded funds and securities. Um, you know, these, these major funds are accumulating Bitcoin month over month. So as price is declining, you see an increase in the accumulation in these funds. So in April, you know, you see this uh, steady accumulation of roughly 10,000 a month. These are your big, uh, you know, your buy tree, VanEck, ProShares, Hashtag, Status Invest, ETF Securities, Cosmos Asset Management. So you see a steady inflow and accumulation in these major funds in Bitcoin. I also want to bring your attention to the, let's see, we got the, uh, Bitcoin longs on Bitfinex, and you can see the uh, Bitcoin longs are going parabolic. Um, you know, just 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 breaking above the previous high right here. Not quite twice as high, but uh, you know, significantly higher. And going into the stratosphere, essentially, you know, you, this this chart has never been this elevated, nor even close to this. So essentially, what it's telling you is that some of these uh, more sophisticated uh, people on Bitfinex with you know a thousand, even ten thousand Bitcoin total. These guys have significant long exposure, right? These are guys who are can be defined as smart money. You know, they've been in the game for, you know, longer than anybody. They have significant exposure, significant skin in the game. If they have uh, significant long exposure, it, you know, it's, it's a scenario where, you know, you have retail sentiment is crushed. Most people have capitulated, sold all their Bitcoin. And, you know, fear and greed index is an extreme fear for multiple weeks. And you have people coming out telling you that, you know, how could you trade Bitcoin? You know, you how could you be long Bitcoin? But then you see these uh, major whales being incredibly long Bitcoin and you see the accumulation in the uh, Bitcoin exchange traded funds and you see the uh, retail sentiment in the tank and you realize, oh, OK, we're at this phase of the market. <laughs> we're at the phase where. Smart money is buying, retail is selling. Uh, it's really not that much more complicated than that, really. I know we try to make it more complicated just to make it sexier and more enticing, but it, it's really the same story over and over and over. At some point, retail will need to be enticed back into the market, and the only way to do that is to raise prices dramatically. I mean, that, that's how all of a sudden, you know, they'll get pulled in through FOMO, and then, and then that's how you have the, the re, you need the retail participants to be a source of liquidity to make money. So at some point they'll, you know, they'll need to be pulled back in. Uh, one, one price distinction I wanted to mention on this chart is this uh, price swing right here. Um, without going into the larger trade idea, I just want to outline this small microcosm right here. So essentially you have this uh, point of origin right here. You have this, uh, what you call as uh, volatility contraction, a series of lower highs on contracting volatility. And then you see an expansion of volatility marked on volume right here. Volume starts to pick up. Then you see these highs broken on a little bit more impulsive price action. And if you know, if you watch my previous trading videos, you know I was taking profit up here, adding on the retrace. Well, I didn't expect price to retrace as far, but ultimately that would have been a good area right here. Price retraces there, and this is a good example of how, you know, if you had had a position here and you had your stop too tight, uh, price ultimately would have come down, stopped you out, and you would have been right on the analysis of, of the trade, ultimately breaking higher, but you would have got stopped out just before that ultimately happened. So this is a good example of how, you know, you don't want, when you're around your entry, you don't want to be too rigid in your risk management because you will get stopped out, right? You want to have that stop loss pretty loose um, and then you'll ultimately close it as price moves in your favor and as you start to secure equity. So even this bounce right here gave you the opportunity to secure equity. It's a little bit easier to see if you go down to an hourly chart, but you can see here, you know, you have this very clear level right here. Those swing lows right there, you know, price bounces from this point of origin right here, bounces up into there and ultimately sells off doing one swipe lower. And one important thing to notice is that if you see this swipe low, 
this uh, liquidity run down here before a break lower, that actually adds validity to uh, this the the power of this up movement because liquidity was ran to the downside. So the odds of liquidity being ran to the downside again before an up movement is very low. And one of the conclusions you can draw from that that is really valuable is you can say that, okay, if liquidity has already been ran at that level and liquidity is probably not going to get run there again, then that makes a very good, a very solid invalidation opportunity and a very significant uh, strike ratio in the sense that this area will not be used as another liquidity run. And that may seem contrary to what many people think because they think, oh, well, wasn't it just used as a liquidity run down here? Well, the idea is that liquidity doesn't get ran at an area more than once. If it's been tapped, it's been tapped. The, it's not going to, the, the odds of it coming down here and sweeping this level again are extremely low. So you, that's a natural area to put a stop loss order. So actually, I just, before I opened this video, I took, I had a uh, 96 uh, position open from 30,000 and I took 20 units off up here, just there. Uh, you can see that marked off by this red arrow right there. Uh, so I just started taking a little bit of profit on the run above these highs right here, this this area of interest. And I want to use this stop loss down here to demark the, uh, so we'll go down to the, uh, let's see, 29,222. And we'll manage a significant portion of the risk at this level. Based on that liquidity concept we covered earlier, the odds of price running down here to sweep are very low. If price comes down there, it's probably because price is ultimately going to break down and go much lower. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, essentially, you know, we whether you think this is a front run test of right here, uh, I would also be looking at these highs up here. If we go to the hourly, this area as well. So I took a uh, profit right there as a front run of this level. Then I'm going to do the uh, 3170 level. 317, excuse me. 31700. 22 units. And then 32. 333. Again, it doesn't have to be perfectly there. I can round down a little bit just because, you know, I want my take profits to get filled. But ultimately, what do we see here? Well, we see, you know, I'm in a long position anticipating a break. If I want to revisit that macro trade idea, we can go back to the weekly. We can say, uh, you know, we have this uh, run down below these macro lows, summer 2021 on heavy volume. Those are major stop losses ran there, major liquidity hit on that tag. Again, forgive me if you guys have seen me explain this in previous videos, uh, but for people who haven't seen it before, we had that macro stop run liquidity low. Then we have a higher high on the daily. Mark that off right here. You break a structure. So you can see how things are starting to, to move towards the upside, right? After that uh, capitulation down right here, you see this, uh, this, this gyration that's further uh, pushing towards breaking structure to the upside. And we can just go down frame by frame. Uh, we see this area here, that apex formation. If you were watching my previous trading journal videos, you know I was taking profit here, looking for a retracement down here. Um, so ultimately what we see is we see price kind of, as it's doing these retracements, what it's doing is wedging itself into this narrowing range. So you, you have these series of higher lows right here. And then there's a lot of confluence, you know, this uh, apex level here. And, you know, if you were to draw something like this, and then maybe you drew a 618 retracement, you know, this, this area behind this, uh, let's see right here. This uh, golden pocket, bearish golden pocket right here. You can see there's a lot of confluence right there to be taking profit. You know, so maybe I want to add another take profit order right there. Just at the 3-1, 3, one, three, three, three level. And just do 11. And it's not, it's not a perfect level. It can always extend much further. But the idea is just to illustrate a concept. There's a lot of confluence uh, coming around there, that area. 
for some type of intermediate time frame, higher low to be put in at that area. And if that happens, then essentially what you have is price being wedged into this narrowing range, right? Where if even if it sells off, if it runs right through, that's fine. I have a position. But if it sells off, then it's even getting into a more favorable risk uh, reward environment. So, you know, as price gets wedged into this corner over here, um, which will happen if it doesn't make a decision and it just goes sideways, you know, ultimately it will be forced to make a decision. And the more time that goes by until that area, the more favorable the risk reward becomes because it just keeps narrowing with time. So, you know, yeah, I have my long position here. Um, you know, if we were going to look at this fractal uh, here, right, this area to your point of origin right here, price comes down, bounces off it. Well, you have the same exact uh, type of strategy forming right here, right? This is an example of price being fractal. You have the same exact thing happening right here. Only I would just use the bodies of these candles right here just because, you know, I want to be a little bit more conservative when entering uh, a position as opposed to exiting a position. So we'll just do 30,000 just, you know, roughly. And again, it's not a huge amount of risk I'd be adding on, less than I'm taking off. But yeah, you get yeah, 20 lots there. Maybe if we go on to 15 minute. Yeah, you know, price moves so impulsively that... Uh, it's very difficult. No, no significant distinctions have formed on the right side of the chart, uh, with the exception of the very low time frames, the minutely time frame. You know, you could. There's definitely a distinction right here, on this level. We could even, just for the sake of of proving that the minute time frames are valid. Look, we got to push above these levels right here, so this potentially depending on what happens after that push, you could have a little bit of a distribution set up right there. So maybe I'm just gonna enter five units at market right there. There, we just entered onto upwards price movement. Now I will add on five more units. The price gets down to this 30620 level right there. Again, this is not trying to predict what price will do, but it's creating, it's just playing the price swings, maximizing the probabilities and trying to create a more favorable setup for a uh, uh, position that ultimately will play out in the macro, right? So if I am trading the minute chart, right, it's gonna be with, you know, orders, order sizes that reflect that it's a minute chart, right? That, and not getting caught up on the insignificance of the minute chart. But ultimately, you can see how I'm trying to frame a position here. Um, ultimately, you know, kind of looking for a break a little bit higher up here. Ultimately, uh, for an expansion into this area of inefficiency right here. Um, and even if you are bearish, you know, maybe you are uh, bearishly inclined. Well, if you, say you are bearish on the macro, you know, you. You're, you know, you're looking at what the Fed is doing, what the interest rates are doing. Uh, your whole macro view would not be invalidated if price goes all the way up here, right? Uh, bear market rallies are very sharp, very, uh, actually more violent than bull market rallies. Bull market tend to be a little bit more of a melt up scenario. But, you know, even if, you know, even if price runs up here, it sets in a lower high, well, you still have the macro bearish bias, right? I mean, you still, you're just filling a price extension. So, you know, I mean, even if you're in a long position, it, it's not like you have to be in a long position, you know, that you're never going to close it until price goes to a million dollars a coin. No, that that's, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about playing this price distinction and just playing the most immediate volatility expansion expecting it in a certain direction, um, but being able to play it either direction, depending on which way it breaks. And I think that's a good topic for another video, but uh, right here, I just wanted to show up like, you know, kind of bare bones set up what I'm looking at, um, how I'm looking to build out this position and ultimately, you know, what kind of uh, 
price behavior I'm expecting in the next few weeks. Well, we've had, you know, nine, 10 weeks of down close Bitcoin candles, you know, whether you're bullish or bearish or whatever, you're going to have rallies in there that are, you know, even, even into a lower high or whatever type of price distinction you're looking for. Um, again, price, price is not just going to fall out of the sky. Um, it's going to oscillate, move around and, you know, you know, e even if, even if the price ultimately does break lower from 25,000, it may not be for several months and several rallies later. So it's a, that's just something to keep in mind. And uh, I hope you guys, you know, just please like this video, uh, subscribe to the channel and I'll uh, catch you guys in the next video.